I'm, uh, I'm co-founder and chief product officer of TripScout. And the really basic gist on TripScout is we're building the world's largest platform for expert travel recommendations. And the way we do that is we have like a little bit of a, of a novel approach to that is we do it by really curating and personalizing all of the world's travel content. Um, so, you know, we started off as a company by writing our own content, but what we realized is there's tons of great publishers, bloggers, and creators that are doing absolutely masterful things. Um, the problem with the user, from a user perspective, is there's either too much content or they can't find exactly the right content. So what we seek to do is almost make like a modern travel guide where if you tell me, oh, I'm going to Rome for this week in May with my family, I find you the exact perfect content that we think you should consume in order to help you plan the, the absolute best trip. You know, it's a bit of a tall kind of like both engineering and operational order to say we want to really curate all of the world's travel content. Um, and so, you know, a lot of what we were thinking about is how do we build it to be as automated as possible where things can be automated and let humans make really good kind of editorial decisions to where humans are meant to make good editorial decisions. Um, and so far we put almost around a million articles through, through this pipeline. And, you know, we're getting real time new content discovered, you know, mostly through RSS feeds and some other processes, uh, but you know, we're getting thousands and thousands every day. And then we work it through this pipeline process where we're adding all sorts of things to that content to figure out like who should see that article and in what context. So we're doing things like um, automatically classifying the topic of that article. Um, we're going ahead and we're trying to look at like how engaging has that article been over social media. Um, and then there's some other issues where, and this is where the complexity comes in that Gravity's helped us with, is like, we just have to understand like who's supposed to see this article. And one of the big challenges for us in scaling globally is like, what place is this article about? We have an engineering team that's, you know, really good at doing things like, you know, building this complex pipeline. You know, we're good at building, you know, different scoring algorithms and things like that in-house. But when we looked at some of these like thornier problems, like how to detect location when that might be quite ambiguous, um, we realized that it was definitely more of like a, a natural language processing problem. Uh, and, you know, I think we could have gone out and started to say, here's the reason why we should hire a data scientist. But again, you know, as any startup, you kind of have to figure out what things you want to invest in and you're going to own outright and are going to be core to you versus what are problems that have already been solved by other people. Uh, and so the beauty of working, you know, with Gravity is like, you know, Gravity was almost our agent in the art of what's possible. Like we were able just to go and say, here's this hard problem that we don't even know if it can be solved. Uh, and Gravity was able to say, uh, yes, it can, it already has, and here it is. We have an architecture, you know, like I said, that is this pipeline that is meant to have these different kind of like microservices plugged into it to do different jobs. So for us, like, you know, the ability to like, Add gravity is like a new task in our pipeline, you know, was built for that. And so, you know, the process of like getting the container, downloading it, you know, getting it, getting it hosted and hitting the APIs, like it just kind of really naturally fit into what we were already doing. Uh, you know, we already had tooling and things in place to like get that feedback loop and try to, you know, evaluate like the fidelity of, of the outputs that the model was giving us. but. You know, I want to say it was probably less than a week. And, and even that less than a week of like, you know, as a startup, it's not like we're ever solely focused on a single thing ever. Uh, so like, if you really want to break down that week, like maybe it was more like two days. I can speak from the startup perspective, like from my eyes where it's like, you know, <clears throat> again, what do you build, what do you buy? And so I look at certain things where it's like, we could go spend all of our time working on, you know, trying to build different algorithms and automate different part of process, but like, it's just gonna be a big distraction from the things that we have to be uniquely good at. Uh, and so I think, you know, for startups that have processes that could really, really benefit, you know, from AI or machine learning, like what a great thing to do to allow you to stay to your core. like. I've also worked with like a whole host of, you know, Fortune 100 companies and I look at them and just realize like they have all this power, they have all this resource, but just sometimes 
executing on things that are bleeding edge is what's like really, really challenging. And so I could also just think to myself, like if I was working at a much, much larger company, like rather than going through like probably what's a year long fight to even consider to do something, I'd rather just be like, here's an algorithm. It's already here. It's from a trusted source. It meets all of our security protocols. Like it's already done. Um, and you know, while I think it's great for startups, I almost feel like it has bigger impact way in the biggest companies. Thank you for letting us defy gravity. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm being, I'm being like intentionally punny and corny here, but it's one of those things. Like if we didn't have this, here's what would have been our, our alternative. It would be either a manual process done internally by somebody who's going to go hand label articles or it's gonna be a really messy, terrible crowdsourcing project. And we went the crowdsourcing route and like, it seemed like it was gonna work, but it just really, really didn't. And so like, we would be doing this, but it would absolutely be hurting our ability to scale. And like one of the big thing that's happened since Gravity is like, we were curating around a hundred different cities, but now we have the confidence to really just let our product work anywhere where there's content. And it solved one of the biggest and most thorniest issues we had around scaling in an elegant way at a really like remarkably good price. And again, if we didn't do this, it would just be one of those weak spots of, of the business. And, uh, and it was solved quickly, easily. And now we think about other harder things.